Hello and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for January 2013. The new year will see the days slowly lengthening, but given clear skies there is plenty to view at night at this time of the year. One interesting note, on the 2nd of January the Earth will be at perihelion, or the closest point in its orbit to the Sun. Starting as always with the Moon, new Moon this month is on the 11th, with the full Moon following on the 27th. The Moon orbits the Earth in 28 days, so a lunar month is two or three days shorter than the calendar month. For this reason, cultures that adopt a lunar month will have 13 months in a year. Now on to the planets that are visible this month. The best time to see Mercury is around 5.15 in the evening, towards the end of the month, just after sunset. As always, be very careful if you use binoculars to look for it, in case the Sun catches you unawares. It will be very low down, only about 3 degrees above the horizon, in the southwest. Venus will still be shining brightly in the morning at the start of the month. It will be the very bright object visible just before sunrise in the southeast. Again, it will be very low down. Mars is not good to view this month. You might just catch it low down in the southwest just after sunset at the start of the month. Jupiter is still magnificent to look at in the evening, again an obvious bright object reasonably high in the sky. Binoculars on a tripod, or a small telescope if you have one, will give great views of the four Galilean moons, and possibly some of the stripes on the planets itself. If you have a reasonably high powered telescope, and you can see the stripes, or to give them their correct name, belts and zones, see if you can see elongated dark spots within these belts. These are called barges and there has been a lot of barge activity over the last few months. On the 8th, 15th and 25th of the month, the great red spot may be seen in the middle of the disk around 9pm. This surface feature is a gigantic storm many times the size of the Earth that is dredging up red coloured gases from deeper in the Jupiter's gaseous atmosphere. Saturn is a morning sky object best seen around 5.45am, towards the end of the month. Look out for the bright yellow object in the south at around 24 degrees above the horizon. The rings will be a magnificent sight in even a small telescope or binoculars. The only meteor shower of note this month is the Quadrantids, peaking between 3am and dawn on the 4th of January. Expect a ZHR of 120. ZHR stands for Zenithal Hourly Rate. This is simply a measure of the expected activity that may be seen from the radiant or the apparent source of the shower if it was directly overhead and there were perfect viewing conditions. Now on to constellation watching. Orion is still magnificent in the east in the evening, moving to the south around midnight. Let's use Orion to find Leo. Look at Orion, now turn 90 degrees to your left and look for a backward question mark in the sky. This is the lion's head and is sometimes called the sickle. The bright star at the bottom of the sickle is called Regulus. To the left you will see a flat oblong of stars with a fairly bright star, called Denebola, to the left as a point or a tail. This is the lion's body. Now all you have to do is imagine a set of front and back paws. Going back to Orion, you can use the three stars of Orion's belt to find two interesting stars. Follow down to the left and you will find the brightest star in the night sky. This is called Sirius. Track Orion's belt to the right and you will come across a red star called Aldebaran, or the Eye of Taurus the Bull. And interestingly, this month Aldebaran is right next door to Jupiter. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for this month. There is plenty more out there to see and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines or in an astronomy book for a sky map to show you what else is out there and where to look for it. As always, another useful tool is a planisphere, which you can use to find out exactly what is overhead at any time and at any date of the year. And these are readily available from any good bookshop. Listen out next month for February's highlights. Bye for now.